What is going on, everybody? Come on in the room, my friends. Come on in the room, my friends. Am I live? Is it on? Is it on? Is this thing recording? <laughs> okay, it's on. I see people coming in. What is going on, y'all? This is your nerd boy cutie reporting for duty to do the Lord's work once again. And I'm here talking about a new show. New show to y'all, let me talk about it, but honestly, one of my favorite shows of all time. I mean, if you were alive and old enough to watch TV, who was not watching Making the Band on MTV in the early 2000s? It was the American Idol for Black people that we really needed. I mean, let's just be very frank. P. Diddy was everything. He's, his career, excuse me, was like at an all-time high. And making the band was really, like, a phenomenon. Like, we not gonna sleep. Y'all not gonna sleep. And I love Diddy. I'm gonna say that right now. I'm, I love Diddy. I watched making the band every episode. And the stuff that I heard him tell the artist about grinding and doing that, those things still live with me to this day. Like, I remember when he, when, I can't remember who it was, whatever the situation was, but Diddy had walked up in that house late night one time and was like what the fuck they doing sleep what y'all doing sleep you can sleep while you dead while you sleep if somebody got there getting your money and bread i was like he ain't say it like that that actually kind of sounded kind of dope but i'm paraphrasing but you get the point that quote stayed with me forever and this is why i be having bags underneath my eyes <laughs> at fucking 26 because diddy told me when i was seven and six and eight <laughs> that if i'm sleep another hoe gonna get my Another hook gonna get my shit. Point is, it was a very influential reality TV show, very influential music competition show. And I just so happened to be sitting on the couch, child, flipping through the YouTube, and I see this playlist of Making the Band Season 2, Making the Band Season 3, Making the Band Season 4, Making His Band. So believe you me, this has opened the floodgates for me because I want to talk to everybody. I want to talk to everybody. It's definitely not top five on my favorite shows of all time, but it's, de it's definitely top 10. Like, how can you not like making the band? I like making the band. Okay, so for those of you who may be new to me, talking to past personalities from reality, reality TV shows, listen, I am in no shape or form trying to expose anybody, trying to make anybody look bad. My whole goal, like as I did with Top Model, as I did with Jocelyn's Cabaret, as I did with Dabble with Legendary, and now that I'm doing this with Making the Band, is to, is to provide a safe space for these personalities and people who we once fell in love with to come and share their story, tell us what really happened, tell us what happened, what is going on, in their way, their fashion, the way that they want to, okay? I just want to talk to him because I'm like, I used to watch you on TV. It's a fangirl woman for me. Listen, I'm not an interviewer. I am just a nosy bitch that's not afraid to ask the questions. Um, I did speak to Mysterious before this interview only because there were some things, as you guys know, who are familiar with her story that are touchy. And she did agree to talk about some of those things in the way that she wants to. So I just want to remind you guys, let's be kind, let's be nice, let's be appreciative that she's taking the time out to come sit and talk with me for you guys and me and all, all the other stuff. And let's just be all about love, all about love, understanding, compassion, patience, all those things. Um, you know, without further ado, without further ado, let's bring in... My skin, bitch. Hey. <laughs> you thought nobody was behind that? You thought it was just a, a thing just sitting there? How you doing? What's going on? How you doing? I'm happy you to see you. You're breaking up the scene already, girl. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in that mirror. I'm doing great. How are you? 
You know what? It is hot as hell in Atlanta. I think we're going through a heat wave. I think it's a heat wave going on because it's hot. But you can fry chicken right now on the sidewalk. It's ridiculous. <laughs> well, I'm trying to get back to Atlanta and get to cooking. And where are you in the world? I'm in Jersey. Jersey, okay. Yes, but I'm from Detroit. Right, I remember, I remember, Detroit, okay. Yes, but I'm in Jersey. I'm in um, Bergen County. That's where I mm-hmm. stay at, yes. So, like, do people still remember you from back in the day? Well, clearly, if I'm talking to you, but, like, besides <laughs> me in this moment, do people still remember you from back in the day? Yes, a lot of people remember me. It'd be tripping me out sometimes because, you know, that show was, like, if I want to say, whoo, that show was, like, 20 years ago, something like that. That's a long time. Yeah. You know, we in 2022, so, yeah, a lot of people remember me. So that means that we gave a great impact on the world, you know? I was just about to no, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, no. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm listening. No, I was just about to say, how does it feel for people to still remember you from that show, still want to talk to you about it? How does it feel? For me, it feels great. Um, a lot of people want to talk to me because of my story. You know, the young lady who, you know, wowed out on TV, spazzed out. And then, you know, a lot of things happened in my life that I came through. So a lot of people look at me like a triumph story. So that's a real, mm-hmm. real cool thing, you know? So I didn't really get too much hate along the way, more of I feel you's and more of, um, you know, support, you know, along the way. Dope, dope. So before we jump into talking about making the band where the world met you, what were you doing before making the band? Okay, before making the band, I was in Detroit. Mm-hmm. Um, I used to squat. Y'all know about squatting? Like different houses, vacant houses, squatting. Me and my dude times was hard when making a band came around. Um, Mm -hmm. And prior to that, I was also in like abusive relationship and I ran away from this guy that I was with. I actually was like 15 years old. He was 16. Um, He started shooting at me in the house. I sent you the pictures. Mm -hmm. That's going to be on my documentary. So I went through a lot of abuse. So music was like my outlet. So making a band came around when I got with this new guy. And my god brother Nugget was telling me about Diddy coming to Detroit and was like, yo, you should go ahead and audition. I said, Diddy had never picked me. I'm too hard. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. That's how I felt at the time. But I went out there, I auditioned, I made it through 75,000 people to the final 12. You know, that was a great, great experience. But before that, I was doing a lot of open mics. A lot of people knew me in the city. I ran with Boss, the mm-hmm. rapper Boss. I ran with Eminem and all of them, D12, all of them. Because at the time when Making a Band came around, I could have did the A Mile movie, but I wanted to do that, Making a Band. Really? I could have been at eight mile with Miss Corona and everybody, but I chose making a band. So. It's, it's so you telling me you know Eminem? Yeah. Or, or or knew Eminem or what's the Yeah, Eminem knows me. That's my bro. Detroit said that we all started off C No Lounge, the shelter, all of that. Strike money, everybody. Yeah, yeah, I'm very known. This yeah. not a part of the this not a part of my question, but how was Eminem back today? I personally like that white man. I like him. Eminem, I want to say this. Eminem had a lot of heart. Eminem had a lot of heart. Eminem ran with proof and everybody and and was a good dude, you know, especially coming from across eight mile into the city to the open mic. He had a lot of a lot of heart, real cool dude. Everything that he's about right now, that's who he was. He was a lot of chunkier back then. Brown hair though. Mm-hmm. You know, chunky. He wasn't as skinny as he is now, but yeah. yeah. Marshall is a real, real good guy. Yeah. Shout out to Marshall. Yes, Marshall. Tell me. Mysterious said, what's up? You know? Right. <laughs> so I'm literally watching Making the Band, like falling back in love with it. I'm like, oh my God, I remember watching this. I remember all of this. I remember this. Now sitting in 2022, watching this show that happened 20 years ago. What I really liked about it was that we were watching them basically put the show together. Like Diddy was on a yacht <laughs> and Diddy was like, Diddy was cussing people out at MTV and was like, y'all got a nerd to be sitting in cameras to the courthouse. I need this, I need this, I need this. Like we were watching him literally make the band, the make the band, make everybody. the show. We saw that. What was it like for you as a contestant auditioning for this show? Was it chaotic? Did it seem structured? Was it organized? What it was, was your experience like? It was not organized. What did you say? It was not organized. It okay. was not structured. Um, Diddy, I, I give big shout out to him. I learned a lot from him with what he did with making the band into what I'm doing now. He freestyled a lot. 
everything was like okay like the one part when um if you go back to it um a lot of contestants was making it everybody was happy then all of a sudden here go diddy oh they think they done made it send everybody the fuck home like he really was spazzed out like that you never knew what to expect from him you had to stay on your toes the competitions was like i want to say like i can't even explain how intense going through these rounds with Diddy was like it was like it's like living or dying like it was just it was it was amazing but it was not it was not organized at all he freestyled along the way but his creative mind got us to where you know the world knows you know right 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 so we know like with these shows of course Diddy is the face of the show but there's other people and we on the show like we saw those people we saw Allison we saw, yes. some, like, we saw some of the producers and whatnot, and we'll talk about Allison a little bit later. I'm curious to know, with you saying that it felt freestyled a lot, was the production company, like, were they taking care of y'all? Like, were y'all, like, eating, hydrating, yes, I can't sleeping, say that. We were, accommodations? We were eating. We were getting along with every four days. This is what people don't want to talk about. You know, they just did it, did dirty, but during the time, yes, we were eating. They paid for that. Every four days, we got an allowance. We had a roof over our head, and it was just basically going go time. And when the business people were around, I'm not going to lie, they, they really was there for us, like telling us what to do, what not to do. And then, I, I want to say, dang, you got me. I'm trying to keep this politically correct, but a Feel lot of people me. are mad at Diddy when it was more people involved, like Viacom, you know. Okay. Who Diddy actually was doing it for? He was the face. So who got majority of the money? Viacom. Even even Diddy got sued after making the band. So a lot of band members go after Diddy, lashing out. Oh my God! But if you read in the contract, it says as long as he got you signed, then he's obligated to. But after that, it was a wrap. But mainly, you were signed to Viacom and Bad Boy. So people be forgetting about Viacom. What what part did does Viacom play in the making the band? Owning the name, owning you know how the shows go. Owning mm -hmm. the name, owning the content. Um, basically, if the show was still going, then the band was still going. Different things like that, and you know the residual cuts and different things like that that we didn't know as kids that was going on. But anybody that's in this business, I always believe you got to give up a little to gain a bigger picture. Anyway, no matter what deal you you come across. The first deals is always going to be what they say is shitty. If I don't, if you don't mind me. Oh no, baby, say what you want to okay. say. You know, you know, it's going to be shitty, but you got to know your business. It's about what you want to gain at the end. At the end, the way I feel, there's no way we could have paid for all that exposure. Mm, okay. MTV put a lot of money. It was a worldwide television show. So mm -hmm. when you think about it now, like people who want to get on Love and Hip Hop, and we was the first, you know, you want to get on Love and Hip Hop and get this exposure is the same thing. But back then it was really, really crazy. So it's not as like now where you can get hot on social media, become a, a, a personality and stuff like that. You had to really be discovered back then. And reality TV was new back then. So they was putting a lot, a lot of money into it back then. And like, what's your feelings towards MTV and Viacom? Like you... You good? You good with how they treated hey, you? Listen, or... Hey, listen, I, hey, listen, man. I, um, I'm, I'm the, I'm the person on the show that's like, let's get to the money because I know the business now. Mm -hmm. You know, I have my own public, uh, publicity company, branding company, so I understand the business. I make content, I make films myself. So at the end of the day, yes, I will still do business with them. Of course, I know, I know, I know the backdrop. You know. Right. Yeah, definitely. You know, I ain't got no ill will. I would still, you know what's so crazy? I would still do business with Diddy because you know that chapter is still open. Okay. I, um, being a nerd, I just be, I just like being nosy. I'd be liking to know. It'd be so many questions popping <laughs> in my head. I love you. Thank you. I appreciate it. And so, of course, like I said earlier, they were showing a lot of like the Viacom execs, MTV execs. Well, it was really the MTV execs and producers. Just like a little side note, a lot of those people are now like senior executives over there at Viacom now. I know. And they're, they're all like big top dogs. It was one Caucasian lady. She's like a big, she's like a big person and I, there now. And look, I'm like this, knock, knock, knock. Let's all <laughs> stuff on the streets. Come on. The Black and these rock star. 
everything that I've been through, making the band, to me finally getting that plaque. I got eight of them, Billboard plaques. Now, back then, the crazy part about it, I don't know about anybody else, but people didn't know we were Billboard artists back then. A lot of people are like, well, Mysterious, how are you a Billboard artist? For those who don't know, if you get on the album and it mm -hmm. gets a Grammy, it gets a Billboard, do you become a Billboard artist? So shout out to Diddy for putting me on that album. You know, so back then, to have eight Billboards, but I didn't know it, if I would have knew the things that I knew now, I would have cashed out a long time ago. You know, right. um, I'm about to get a royalty check from back then. Shout out to Bad Boy. Shout out to MT. Really? Yes. Shout out to my lawyer. So I have no beef with him. <laughs> I have no beef. No beef. Shout out to my lawyer. Yes, yes. Okay, so this is, girl, you derailing my whole line of questions. Cause you just, <laughs> and now I want to know. So how did that come about that? You're telling me that you're that you're about to get because you were on the making you were on the band album, yeah. which we'll get into later about you coming in and saying Babs was bad and all this other <laughs> stuff. Yeah, we can talk about that too. Right, 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 right. But like now you're saying that you're gonna get a royalty check. Tell tell me how that happened. Like what's going so, on? Okay, so this is the bomb thing. Uh, well, the way the paperwork was made, you had to make a certain amount of uh, basically like hit like. 800,000 to a million have sold and then you could start getting royalty checks and different things like that. Now, I am the young lady, you know, broke the glass wild out and not to mention Harv, shout out Harv. He called me after then like, why did you do that? Because nobody knows Diddy was going to give me a solo deal that night. I kind of, but that, that feels right though. I thought, I, I felt that. I fucked up and spazzed out. Where they was like, yo, you never want to look like a liability in this business. True. So back then, you know, with Spaz and now, people not really used to that. And, you know, Diddy kind of looked like, hold up now. I don't want you tearing up my office if I do sign. <laughs> Something don't go your way, you know? So um, getting on the album at the time, I had a lawyer. But the lawyer that I had at that time, we got lost contact and, you know, things start happening in mysterious life. You know, I went people, places and things that we'll probably talk about. Mm -hmm. And eventually, you know, things start accumulating. I got a good lawyer now. He started digging, 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 digging. And I got a check, 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 check. Well, congratulations, Mysterious. That's what's up. Thank you. And I want to put my money, not into bashing Diddy or anything. I want to, you know, do my life story. And I also want to put my money into myself because a lot of times back then, people didn't know how to market me. That was another thing, too, because I was so different. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, I think they thought I wanted to stay in the baggy pants and stuff. No, I wanted to be like how Nick and them is now, but I just got a rough voice, you know. Mm -hmm. So they didn't know how to, you know, put that together and, you know, different things like that. So I want to show the world what, you know, they should have mm -hmm. did back then. So I want to know. I got my questions over here as I'm looking over. I'm looking at okay. the screen. How was it finally auditioning in front of Diddy? He y'all was in like this room. He was sitting at this table. It was a bunch of people around. I was like, listen, I can tell this is early on TV. It told me to excuse my French niggas right now. Y'all yeah, sit your ass down. Sit his, down. But how was it? Yo, shout out to his mom because I know it was hard, and his mom who really, when I walked out, like, ha, 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 right? So when I first came in there, right? Now, check this out. I ain't going to lie. I thought, so, okay, so in Detroit, I got to tell you this part because if I don't tell you this part, then that's, like, like not giving the beauty of my story, you know? Definitely. So my god brother Nugget had me come out to the Fox Theater. Actually, they kidnapped me, came to the house, and said, you know, you're going to go get something to eat because when he offered it the first time, I said, Diddy's not going to sign me. I'm too gangster. I'm not going to go down here and embarrass myself, you know. So he came and picked me up the next day. My I was with my baby father at the time. So they're like, yeah, let's go out to eat. And, you know, me, I never turned down no food. <laughs> I like to eat. So I got in the car. We passed on all these restaurants. I'm like, what restaurant are we going to? they like, we're going to get to the restaurant after we go here. So now I'm kidnapped, you know. they like, we're going downtown. We're going to see what this is about, you know. Missy was being really, really extra. I don't want to go. You know how that go. Uh -huh. So I get down there. 
We at the Fox Theater. There's like four buildings. The line was wrapped around four buildings, yo. It was like a movie. It felt like I stepped from one side of life to the next side as soon as I got there, right? Wow. So now I'm like, oh, hell no. Ain't no way I was getting <laughs> in this shit. So I'm, you know how you're looking for reasons to go up on your people. So I'm like, I told you. Shit came out. All these people, blah, blah, blah. they like, you going to walk this line. You popular enough in the city to where you can walk this line and somebody going to let you get in front of them. So I'm like, all right, we're going to walk this line. If don't nobody let me get to the front, by the time I get to Fox Theater, I am leaving. Because this, this is crazy out here. Because I'm telling you, the, the, like, I'm telling you when the movie comes, I'm talking about people was outside in tents. Wow. Like, it was crazy, right? So, walk the line. I get right to the Fox Theater building, right? Somebody let me get. Shout out to Anonymous. I'll never forget you to this day. That's a, a artist in Detroit named Anonymous who let me get in front of him. He like, yeah, I'm serious. Get in front of me. Da, 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 da. So we talking. Next thing you know, this is a true story. A black cloud come. You know how it's a real hot day. So I'm looking, I'm like, oh, hell. you know how when it's so hot, you like, it's about to rain. And I'm looking, I'm like, oh my God, it's a cloud coming. It's about to rain. <laughs> so now the cloud comes. When I tell you, it started raining like cats and dogs, like somebody just dumped a whole pool on me. You know, everybody started leaving. It's about like 50 people now. I want to leave. I'm like, I, I, now I look fucked up getting on TV. That's the first thing I was thinking, right? If I get in here and I'm drenched up and I look like this, it's a wrap. My baby daddy, my, um, if you're a bad boy, you going to stay in this line you a star you gonna get wet they gonna see how you want it this that, and the third right so now he gets up to the front the security comes out and when security come out they said look we only taking five more people that's it so now i'm like what the? now everybody outside like hell no so the song uh move bitch get out the way that song was out so now everybody is it, it fucking saying this shit outside? Get out the motherfucker. My baby daddy, shout out to my baby daddy. He snuck behind security, waved me in, like, because they wasn't paying attention. I creeped in, walked in the foyer. A lady from MTV came right into the foyer and was like, I'm only taking one more person. It had to be like 100 people there. And they said, You, you come on. She pointed right at me. And I said, Me? She's like, you better come on. I ain't going to take you in there. And that was, and it was like, we've been out here for hours. That's how I got in. Okay, two things are going on right now. <laughs> Three things. First of all, that was a dope-ass story. Dope. Really? As you're telling this story, in Atlanta, right? I'm in Atlanta. It's thundering and lightning right now. Like, it's a cl <laughs> it's, it's literally, it's literally <laughs> just got dark outside and it's about to rain. Hey, look, you know, it's so crazy. Everybody always say I have this magical, enchanting power when I tell stories. I swear to God. No, seriously. It literally just started thundering. The uh, third thing was, why do I know Anonymous from Detroit? Detroit. Yes. He's why do a I know that name? He's an artist in Detroit. Um, he's a legend now. You know, um, he was back then with Eminem and all this when he was coming up in the open mics. You got a lot of people that were known from back then. His name is Anonymous. I don't know. I feel like I know that name. I'm going to I'm a, I'm a do gotta look him up. Shout cool. out to him. If it wasn't for him, hey, y'all wouldn't know the series. And mind you, he, a lot of people like Nigeria Earth, um, a few people that came out that auditioned, they didn't make it. Mm -hmm. You know, but, you know, I love them. You know, they're part of my city. It is what it is. We're here now. But yeah, yeah, that's how I got in. So when I got in there, right, Carter Pierre, he was sitting there at the table. Then it was all MTV, Fox Theater. Like, it's thundering. It's thundering outside. I'm like, this gotta be, this is a movie, right? Walks in. Harvey don't see me. I'm drenched. You know how people be laughing. Because this, because I'm going to tell you, Bad Boy was like a fraternity. You you know, the big brothers and mm -hmm. big sisters, like, you got to make it in. So when I came in, you know, you see the snickering with the, the executives and everybody. So I get on stage. Carm says to me, he said, what you going to do? I said, you know, my voice is different from my rapping voice. So I was like, yeah, I'm going a, I'm to a rap. And Harv was like, you're going to rap. What beat you going to rap to? I said, give me niggas, beat, niggas Bleed by Biggie. 
Mm-hmm. He gave me that niggas bleeding. I started rapping, yo. Everybody went crazy. They see, you know, they say, hey, hey, stop, stop, stop. I'm like, why? I'm just getting into it. Why would y'all? I remember that. You was like, I'm just getting to my verse. You did say that. No. You did say that. Because when I started and my voice came through like the thunder on the microphone, the uh, the people up on the balcony that know me from the city was like, oh, mysterious. They love to get, you know, and they like, uh, uh, uh. I'm like, oh, why did you just get started? Like, come on now. And then they took me upstairs and I talked to shout out Kenny Hall because you never forget the people who start you off. That's why I'm shouting out everybody along the way. Uh, Kenny right. Hall, he took me to the side. He was one of the producers of the show. Took me to the side, interviewed me, got to know me. And then next thing you know, they had us come downstairs. Now, this is the part. Now, they start separating us. So they said, some go on this side, some go on that side, some go on this side. So they put me on the right-hand side, right? So I'm like, oh, man, what's about to happen? They looked at the left side. The producers could be so dramatic. <laughs> they looked at the left side. Looked at my side, the left side, and they said, everybody on the left, I'm sorry. We're going to have to let y'all go. Oh, my God. Security come. People go, oh, what the fuck? Da, da, da. I talk, da, da, da. I'm like, oh, shit. So now they looking at us. I'm like, and I swear, in the beginning, friend, I did feel like I was going to spaz out. I'm like, if these niggas embarrass me like these niggas. Are. <laughs> so they looked and they said, y'all made it to the next round. I, I could have passed out. I ran outside. My baby daddy, my um godbrother Nugget, shout them out. They were still outside in that rain waiting for me. I say, Yo, hey, you're back. I just was talking to him and just, you know, letting them know. No, you are totally fine. You are totally fine. So they separate y'all. Yes. They separate. And... Go ahead. No, no. No, they, se- they separate y'all. And then is that when y'all performed in front of Diddy? No, so when they separated, they said we got to come back the next day. So the next day I came back and I did it again. So what happened was I came back. Uh, shout out DJ uh, Jane, Kim James in Detroit. He said, yo, you do what you did yesterday. I'm telling you, you're going to make it. So I got up there, did the same thing. And then they said the first person to go out to see Sean P. Diddy Combs is mysterious. I was the first person they called during the whole Audition. Shout out to you, Mysterious. Shout out to you. Now, I ain't gonna lie. I remember watching, like I said, I'm back. I'm binge watching it. You had called an attitude with those people. You was like, I'm just getting into my verse. And y'all, and y'all stopped me. (laughs) Y'all stopped me. How, but how was it? You noticed they did that to me the whole show. Mm Mm-hmm. They did. They stopped (laughs) you. And and to piss me off, he did that too on the album. Good, good, good. Four lines. I want it so bad I can taste it. You better move, do something, because I'm getting impatient. Uh-huh. It's so bad I can taste it. With the gun up in my waist, I'm losing patience, and that's it. <laughs> do me like that. Did, what what What's your belief on why you feel like they did you like that? Because I'm, I was before my time, I'm very talented, and I felt like, you know, did he not sign me at that time? I really feel like he didn't want to give people a heads up on signing me. I really feel that way. I could be wrong. I could be wrong. But that's the way I personally feel. Now, I have a question about one of my favorite people. You just jogged, you just jogged my little memory from being a child. <laughs> One thing I used to love about seeing Diddy in public, whether it was at an award show or on the show, I knew his mama was going to be with him and she was yeah. going to have her a bang wig with a thick ass motherfucking yes. coat. Where, I mean, this is just bring about memories. I need to go. I, where is yes. this mama at? Yeah, I love her. You know what? I never got a chance for one. I'm going to do it on your show because you're so bomb. I do it. I never got a chance to apologize to Diddy. And I never got a chance a chance to apologize to his mom or bad boy staff. Now a lot of people are like, yo, mysterious, why would you do that? That's like 20 years ago. Because I became an executive myself and I understand, you know, everything that he was trying to tell us then. I understand his position, how he felt back then, because I'm in them positions now. And I understand the love he had for me. I <laughs> I really spat. That's like you have love for somebody. And you telling them what's right, and you got a gift for them, and then all of a sudden they just like nigga fuck you, you know what I'm saying? Right, like, right. You know, and I really feel 
like I started the whole fuck Diddy shit with the making the band shit. You when, like um, I really feel like that. And um I, I I really was young at the time, you know, and I just was trying to find myself and I had a lot of anger issues because of what I was going through personally, you know, in my life and what I was trying to make it out of, you know. So um, his mom really believed in me. The whole bad boy staff, they all, you know what I mean? We were like, yo, mm -hmm. we're serious. Like, and for me to behave in that manner and not wait until to see what was going to happen, you know? Yeah. I really feel so bad about that. But hopefully Diddy proud of me now. Came back, got my eight billboards, got my royalty check. You feel me? I'm doing business with Ricky Rose. You know what I'm saying? I'm out here in these streets. Mm -hmm. TV, I'm the princess of Wall Street. I took over Wall Street. I got my office in Rockefeller Center, like doing my movies and stuff. Like I'm here. So, congratulations to you, Mama. That making the band really did do good for some of us. Everybody gonna cry about their checks and stuff, but I feel as though if you really listen to Diddy, if you really listen to Diddy, there's no way that nobody should be successful right now. Yeah. yeah there's no way. It's no way. And then y'all, they got a chance to go on tour with them. Like, you know what I'm saying? You got a chance to be there. Like, I would have flipped it. Like, I took my little time and I flipped it on. You feel mm -hmm. me? Let me would have been on the stage. Let me would have made connections. Let me would have grasped to where the luck, the world just loved me like that. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't have started beefing with Diddy. I would have just did my own thing. And we just would have been us just going, you know, how it is. You know what I'm saying? But and you know, I feel as though. And you know what? I think people are accustomed to the making the band Diddy that got popular when Danny D. Kane was popular. And, you know, Diddy, you know, Diddy was, e I mean, Diddy always had a strong ego and, like, you know, he always been the shit. But when I was watching Diddy with y'all, Diddy seemed so humble. He seemed he so was. inviting. We he seemed listen. so, I like, into the into the whole process of really want to, wanting to see y'all succeed. And I'm sitting here, like, watching, like, people like Chopper and them, and can Mysterious going on, I'm like, y'all are in Diddy. You don't know people want to be in Diddy presence. Like, can this I speak is... on something? Yeah, 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 go ahead. And I'm speaking on everything with love. So shout out Bab. I still love Bab. We still communicate. You know, we were young back then. It was a competition. And, you know, um... You know, it is what it is. I love everybody in the band. But, you know, might I speak maturely about certain things? I feel as though that, you know, they might say, oh, Missy, you wasn't there. You don't know, I, I got my check from 18 years ago. I understand. I'm finally get my royalty check. I ain't have to be all out loud, fuck Diddy and all that, because it's not going get, to get you nowhere. You know, mm -hmm. at the end of the day, if I could drop a jewel on your show, the game is really about this big. It's really this big. You have people who have relationships with people. You know, you go off on Diddy. How do you expect to sign with a Rick Ross? How do you expect to sign with a Jay-Z? You know what I'm saying? Oh, fuck that nigga. Da, 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 da. But then you go to Jay-Z and you on his desk. And he's like, well, uh, when you have a, you know, disagreement, you might, you know, put me out there like that. You might you know, spaz on me and my kingdom. So at the end of the day, I'm always going to tell people that's not the right way to go, especially if your change ain't up. If your change up, then it's different. Then you got money, then you can go to NBC. You could go to Fox. You could pay Hot 97. You could go to all these places because you, you, you can pay to be in these avenues to get your voice out there. But when you don't have the money and you're angry about the money, and then you're mm -hmm. trying to go at a giant, man. You're going to carry yourself. Yeah. You know, so I felt like, even I felt bad for Freddie P. Why? Uh, if you remember, remember when I did not make the band and that night I spazzed out and I walked up the stairs? He was laughing at me. If you go back, mm -hmm. everybody laughed at me when I didn't make it. You feel what I'm saying? It was like, we made it. We on top. I always looked at that show and say, why didn't they take these that moment, though? Mm -hmm. A lot of things that they were doing, fighting in the studio, all, that's just my personal opinion from 20 years ago. You know right. what I'm saying? To not do that. But I noticed when Diddy said he was calling to bring me back, did y'all notice everybody got on their bike? 
They ain't want Mysterious to come back. Remember? Oh, no, no. Now, listen, I, I, li I just watched this episode before getting on this thing, and I said, because they were showing out, and when they said, when Diddy said he finna call Mysterious, everybody <laughs> went to work. They went to work. <laughs> and look, I always bring that pressure. You know what I'm saying? And one thing that I can say, I'm like that now as an executive. Mm -hmm. You know, I've been through a lot, Oliver, and I'm going to get, I'm going to talk to you about it because you're so bomb. And I feel as though I, I feel safe to talk to you, you know, mm -hmm. to, to really go into the purposes of what people really want to know about me, mm -hmm. you know? So at the end of the day with Diddy, they, they did not seize the moment. And I kept on wishing I could get back. And when Diddy did call me back, he did it just to tease him. Because he mm -hmm. knows he's hardworking. He know he'll put me in any song, any anything. Diddy, Diddy knows mysterious. I'm a problem. Right. But they, they knew it too. But that's how he got the album out of them. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody need to thank Mysterious. Thank Mysterious for putting that pain of pressure across their neck and their back. Because they got like, the hell no, Mysterious ain't coming back. Hell no. Right. You no, know, that shit was crazy. I was, my mouth was like, because, you know, you know, they do editing a certain way. Shout out Babs. I love you. You feel what I'm saying? Because, like, when Babs came back, I was like, yo, if anybody deserves to be here, it's bad. You know, because I'm a very humble young lady. You know what I'm saying? I feel as though if this female rap, this person sing, this person do that, she can't do what I do. Mm -hmm. So I don't really feel intimidated by nobody. So I am good to say, yo, this female can be here or this person. But when it came down to old mysterious, I got on my bullshit back then. I was going to Wendy Williams. I was like, yo, it's me against the band. Yo, every time they, I was talking shit, like, yo, every time they see me, they gonna rip out the club. I, like, I was on their ass a little bit. You know what I'm saying? But we older. I love them. You know Dope. what I mean? Uh, Babs is doing the Queen of the Ring. Uh, Ness is doing something the weekend in Philly. You know, I just did the uh, car show with Ricky. That shit was big. Shout mm -hmm. out Ricky, yo. Shout out Ricky Rose. Yo, he's different. So... Martin, this is a question from Martin Copeland. He is saying, you're absolute gold. Please ask Aww. Mysterious who her musical influences are. Her voice her voice and flow are so unique. Oh, I love you. Love you, love you. So, all right. My first rap influence is the female rapper Boss. You ever heard of her? Mm -mm. Deeper and deeper. She be like, I don't really want to feel her. So you got to okay. her up. Then Scarface. Then it's uh, Tupac. And then don't look at me Tupac. weird, y'all. Janis Joplin. Okay. Okay. Okay, I'm okay with that. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I love Janis Joplin. Um, I'm Beethoven. And when you say how is that a musical influence? Do you know I sit and practice rapping to classical music? That's how I know my tones. Oh, wow. Yeah, so Bach and um, Beethoven and them are really my influences. It's funny you ask me that. Like, you know, I'm a real, real geek with that type of stuff. But I practice <laughs> the classical music. Mm -hmm. What were you feeling when Diddy said, send everybody home and we're looking for more talent? You want to know the truth? If you look on it, they edit it out. They edit it out. That's how you know it was freestyle. Because look, after that, you see us all in the hotel, right? Mm -hmm. And I was like, this should motivate us to just do what we got to do. Before that, I swear to God, I was telling everybody, sitting there, I was like, yo, they about to send us home. It's no way that this is what Diddy, because it really wasn't not like that. It was talent. But it was making the band. This is MTV. They wanted more people there. So I felt like they was going to do that. I said it on camera. And then they turned around and did it, but they cut it out. Mm -hmm. And how did you feel in that moment? Like, because all y'all had to go back home. I felt at that moment, I felt like, okay, because it didn't really just start yet. 
So my heart wasn't set on gotcha. you know the rounds and everything. It was like you know get back down here to the D, get to what I got to do. But guess what? When he sent us back mm -hmm. a week later, did he send for me? Sent the car for me, a limo. Sent me mm -hmm. to the airport in a limo. When I got to New York, picked me up with a limo. I think I was the only one that was getting that service. I should have picked up the signs then that I was Diddy's favorite. Rich shit. I should have. I just didn't pick up the signs. And so once y'all come back and there's new people there, how did it feel when he finally called your name to be like one of the final people going to the house to see who's going to make the band? If you notice, at first I didn't think he was going to do it. Mm -hmm. I was sitting there nervous as hell with my ponytail looking up. <laughs> <laughs> Mysterious in his ponytail. Yo, I should have Yo, MTV wasn't right. They had us out there looking really bummified back then. <laughs> mm -hmm. But, um, that's the moment when it hit me that I really wanted to do this. When we was at Justin's and I was sitting there weighing Detroit, weighing what I was running from, weighing what I told my family I was going to do, weighing what I was going to tell my friends. Then I'm sitting there looking like, yo, this is really Diddy in front of me, yo. Mm -hmm. This nigga got to call me, man. That's all. And I was sitting there like, yo, if he just give me a chance, if he just give me a chance, and I still feel like that to this day, and it, making a band is over, you know what I'm saying, to where I'm giving my own self a chance. But that moment with Diddy, a person that's that accomplished, because when I was a kid, Oliver, I promise you, I used to look at uh, Diddy with Biggie when that bad boy come out to play. play. I used to tell my friends, I'm like, yo, I'm going to meet him one day. I used to tell him that all the time. So when I was there and it finally was going on, I was like, yo, this is really Diddy. Oh, my God. I really got in the competition. This is really it. That's when it hit me. That's why when I perform, um, get your hands in the air if you need some favor. Uh -huh. <laughs> I, I was trying to go hard like Diddy. I need some money. Fuck all this making a band shit. This is how I feel. <laughs> I promise you, this is how I was cutting into Diddy in 18. Mm-hmm. Fuck this making a band. Put me in a fucking studio. Put me with a stylist. Get me out here in this paint. And I'm going to go hard. I'm like a pit bull in a skirt. I don't need no I don't need no band members. I used to be like, they're going to slow me down. And look, they was fighting. If I would have been in there, I would have said, yo, I'm the captain. This nigga get kicked out. That nigga get kicked out. And we're going to have other auditions for new niggas to come in. Because y'all niggas slowing me the fuck down. That's why I did it with <laughs> That is funny. That is they funny. Been, they, look, I got to trust you with my life. Mm -hmm. That's like if me and you in a band, me and you in a group, that means you my brother. Like mm -hmm. That means like if somebody pulling a gun, look, we both jumping in front of the bullets for each other. Like if we right, go right. hard to go home and I got to help you get this money and you got to help me get this money. Right. How are we out in the same group? The competition over. Mm -hmm. They were still competing with each other. I would have been a nigga like, listen, I'm going to fuck around and get a solo. Look, while they would have been people, I would have made a solo album and everything. No right. <laughs> oh, my God, I'm serious. So we see Diddy and the show start putting y'all through, like, intense artist development training. The first thing we see is these field days, these, like, boot camps. And you, oh <laughs> you wasn't here for it at first. Not when you, not when you um had that moment, but it was like a first one. How was it being physically <laughs> trained, physically active? I'm pretty sure in a way you had never been before. How was that for you, girl? I mean, now, we saw look, what happened. But I, how was it in the beginning? So, you know what's so crazy? I used to play ball in school, right? Mm -hmm. And I thought my coach worked me out then. Ain't no workout like Diddy. I think Diddy was on some type of I don't know type of stuff. They had us on them workouts was excruciating, but I understand it now. Mm -hmm. Because when you're doing a 45 minute set, when you're doing, you're bouncing all around the stage, you're dancing, you gotta be able to have your wind up and your body gotta feel like noodles, like normal to that. Mm -hmm. So you gotta go through this extensive training in order to get there. Oh my God, but I didn't know. Lord have mercy. <laughs> it 
Diddy workout. Mm -hmm. Somebody threw up. I forgot his name. Um, damn, what's his name? One of the contestants, y'all know him too. The the one who used to always fall asleep, but y'all seen him a little bit, not much. He used to, we used to say, damn, how you gonna go on a roll? He always fell asleep. Uh huh. <laughs> but um, he threw up. Some other people fell out. Like it was bad. <laughs> and that was Diddy way of sending us home. Right, like you can't handle it. And that's how people was getting cut. Yo, Diddy was wrong. It was some good people that was, I can't say wrong, but it was really some good people that they was like, yo, if you didn't make it through the workout, we're sorry, you're going home. I felt bad for a lot of people. You know, I'm on the side like, damn, I know I'm about to go home. That's why when you see when I was running, they was like, we don't want Mysterious to go home. They came and got me like, no, nah, They came and got you. <laughs> How was it? How was it dancing in front of Diddy? Like all the girls had to come dance in front of Diddy and show him your moves. I don't know. Yeah, I, I just told you, I just binge watched the whole thing. How was it? It's on YouTube. Like all of the video, all the episodes are on YouTube. I binge watched the whole thing. You know what's so crazy? I can I be honest with you. Mm -hmm. I loved being creative in front of Diddy, but I was very insecure back then. Mm -hmm. so I couldn't get into my bad girl image that I got now like I feel like I could drop it like it's hot now I could sexy one all that but back then it was like yo this girl right here she's prettier oh wow this girl outfit is like that oh wow oh man I'm about to get cut but Diddy didn't cut me because I guess you know when I got up there I just had fun like it was like mm -hmm. just did whatever but you know back then yeah like it was a lot. It was a lot with the other women, especially with somebody like Diddy. And then mm -hmm. a person like myself. And that was another reason why I used to say then, oh, Diddy's not going to put me in a band because I felt like... And me and Diddy had this conversation. Oh, he came to... The, I don't know if you've seen it. He came and I was like, so what is it that you're looking for? He was talking to me. I had on a, a, a sweat through the sun and um, a blue sweat suit. And um, I was telling him they cut it. I said, I don't think you're going to like me because I'm big. I'm a big girl. I was like, yo, my voice deep and this, that, and the third. Diddy said to me, he said, you talk to the person who signed Biggie and Craig Mack. Mm -hmm. And I was like, right. Come on, flavor in your ear. <laughs> you know, but I blew it by spazzing out. That's what blew it. That, that right there and I'm not knowing, you know what I mean? Like, my temperament or my you know damn we just we don't want this again you right. know that's what blew my situation but they had the solo contract that night which which we gonna get to we're gonna get to what's up dsj now let's, to, get, to get some fun stuff <laughs> you and chopper had like <laughs> a tip early on and y'all were in a room and you was like don't disrespect me don't dis and what was going on with you and chopper Chopper is. I have to say, and you know what? I'm praying for Chopper. Look, even though I feel as though the band be like, you know, I don't care what they say. I'm the seventh member of the band. Let them know. Do nothing without me. You know. <laughs> Let them know. Let them know, Mysterious. So, Chopper is amazing at mind games. He is. He is the. He is the master of the Forty Eight Laws of Power. If you ain't never read that, listen. Chopper know that book inside, out, and frontward, okay? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Chopper was there to get everybody out there positioned mentally. He came with a different war strategy, and I really, now that I'm older, I admire him for it, and, you know, when he get out of his little trouble, he got this new song on online. Um, what do he say? I like this new song. I can't even think of the title. But me and him need to get up and do a song. His new style and my new style. I'm telling you, the two people who didn't like each other, come on. That right mm -hmm. there would be a crazy hit. But Diddy, I mean, not Diddy, Chopper. I was, I guess, everybody seen Diddy like her or Bad Boy or whatever. So Chopper made it his business to get under my skin every fucking chance he got. <laughs> <laughs> like, I was sitting there. And Chopper was talking shit under his breath the whole time. I'm like, what the fuck he talking about? Like, man, this nigga. Because I, you know, we still knew. Well, I ain't really know him like that. And it's still a bunch of contestants. So 
everybody was complaining about Chopper that day and the days before, but just so happened Chopper comes to start fucking with me this day. So he's talking on his breath, looking at me like, I'm like, what the fuck? Anyway, so I <laughs> turned my chair. I turned my chair away from him. And you know how to spin a chair and your feet touch the other person? Chop is so fucking petty, right? My feet sh- touch his shoes. And he's like, yo, these war- he said, these warrior shoes. Don't be touching my shoes, Woody, and all that shit. I said, who the fuck you thought that? I just thought, I started going the fuck off. <laughs> I'm like, I said, no, you ain't gonna sit over here and fuck with me on the low. We about to be, be all out in the open with this. <laughs> and I would not, like, come down because Chopper was the person, like, it was like, okay, it's a mental game with him, so I'm gonna fight with you. And then that, uh, what a lot of people don't know is the night before they take the band is when I found out Chopper had a little crush on a nigga a little bit. Chopper wanted, Chopper wanted a little mysterious. Yeah, man, come on. They always in the room showing they good goods. <laughs> so, you know, that's what it is. That's what it is. That was back in the day. You know what I'm saying? So, the next thing we see regarding Mysterious is, and Mysterious, I'm so sorry to admit, but I was laughing so hard at you when you were on that field. We spoke about it earlier, but <laughs> speaking about it, especially now, when you were on that field and you were falling out and they had to come get you, and then you went to the hotel and you were screaming. I was like, what the fuck wrong with Mysterious? Why is she screaming like this? And then, you know, the part, the part that got me, oh, and I actually... And I actually, like, I said, you know what, I respect her. I was telling my partner, it was the part when they put you on the stretcher and they were trying to put the sheets on you. And you was like, don't put no white sheets on me. Don't put no white sheets on me. I don't want no white sheets. Walk us through that moment. What was going on? What pushed you to that limit of you going bananas, falling out screaming? And it, like, were you hurt? Were you in pain? What happened, Mysterious? Yeah. So that's, but number one, that's another reason why I know I had to turn into the artist I am now which is a theatrical artist, the theatrics, you know. Um, I caught some bad-ass fucking Charlie horses. Those things was moving up my, the bottom of my feet to the back of my calf to my thighs. And that mm-hmm. <laughs> would not stop. It was like, man, oh, Lord. Like, I couldn't stretch my legs out. I couldn't do nothing. When I tell you Diddy, worked you into the ground and I did everything just not to go home. Mm-hmm. Man. So now they 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 cause you know this is a new you know reality show. They don't know what's going on. They called the paramedics. Now I'm like, oh fuck in my mind like oh I'm <laughs> now I'm the weekend <laughs> but I get in a fucking ambulance. Did you see Pocahontas all crying and shit? Uh huh. <laughs> Shout out Pocahontas, I miss her. Um so when they came and I really was trying to walk away from the stretcher because I was like, Diddy is going to send me home. This mm-hmm. is too much. The damn ambulance came, the police outside. Oh, Lord. <laughs> so then when they went to put me in that stretcher, this was a real moment for me. I really started seeing a lot of people that I knew passed away. I really? really did, and I really started freaking out like, because I just went through a big traumatic situation in Detroit, and you could look it up. Um, it's in the Metro Times. It spoke about uh, me being around somebody got murdered, and I, you know, you know, you know, and I was there. You know, it's, it's public. It's, it's knowledge. It's public knowledge. So it's like, okay, when the sheets came, it was like, oh, shit, I started seeing everybody that I knew even in childhood. I was like, oh shit, no, don't put that shit on me. And I really like had a moment at that time. So and then I didn't know it was gonna be seen. I didn't know they was gonna keep it. You know, I didn't mm-hmm. know none of that. So you guys were having a sit down with um I think it was Allison. I think it was Allison, I think. And she was asking you guys a bunch of questions. But unbeknownst to y'all, Diddy was watching the entire time and was feeding her questions. What was that moment like for you? That was so funny. Because at one point, Alice sat in front of me and said, what you say, Diddy? (laughs) 
in her ear. And she had to walk out and walk back in because I guess that's what he told her. Like, listen, you uh, you you fucked up. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. but that was really intense. So mm -hmm. that's where I get for like in my auditions when people come audition for me and my tour and different things. The intimidation factor, I got that shit down to a motherfucking science because that shit right there, having somebody there. And then talking in the earpiece, and you can't hear what they saying, and he could be clowning you right there, and you don't even know, and they gotta keep a straight face like that right there was like so intense. But mm -hmm. it also helped me as a, a, a artist uh, be able to handle that wave of intimidation and you know take control of the whole thing. Yeah, yeah. how was that? Um talent show that you guys did in the club. I'm trying to say, yeah, the final, it was the oh final talent showcase yeah, in front really of Diddy. In hey, look, you really in that. I like. I told you, I just binge watched Yo, all of this. Oh my God, you give the best making a band, band interview ever. <laughs> I swear to God, because they only deal with one part with me and that's it. Like, um, that actually was my favorite part. So That right there, because I used to be in a marching band in school. Mm -hmm. And it reminded me of when I used to be in practice and the the drum line because I played the drums. I started off with this. I started off playing violin in elementary. Then the middle school was the saxophone and drums, and in high school it just ended up being the drum line, right? I know how to play the piano too. So when we got there and it was the live band, mm -hmm. man, that's why I took that mic. Like, hold up, I need to do this in school. This this right here ain't nothing but practice, and it really made me see like now I want to do a whole live band album mm -hmm. you know I love the live band that was my favorite part of the whole that one right there was my favorite there's nothing like a live band while you're on stage and you just feel the the pulse and to me I, it just feels like pulse I just feel like everybody's just on one accord and it's just like power it's just power 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 that's why um my there's nothing like performing in church for me. There's not there's nothing ever yes. like in church. I'm a big like, fan of you know, yours. I'm sorry. Uh, oh, I, I appreciate it. Yo, I was listening to your music earlier today. Like I'm like, yo, what yo, you got that. Like your bars, your connection, your attitude, your swag, I fuck with it heavy. I get appreciate it, mysterious. Get back, get back. That's my shit. <laughs> <laughs> I and the one that got on your page, now that's my shit. You, yo, I'm sorry, I just had to tell you publicly, like that shit hard. You hard. You I hard. appreciate you. Thank you so yeah. much. So much. Hard. So, so we talked about the final. We talked about the show. Okay, so here we go. And this is something like I talk. I talked to the people. We talked. So we're gonna get into it. So on the show, the world saw in real time an unfortunate tragedy involving your sister, right? So when I checked in with you before this interview to see if it was something that could be discussed, you okayed it as long as we focused on domestic violence and advocacy for that. So yes. what is your, what, what, what is that you would like to share with us about that situation and domestic violence? Yeah, so my god sister at the time, not my biological sister, I had a god sister named Marquita as well as my biological sister. Um, my god sister was dating this guy. Um, you know how that goes, the dudes in the hood. And I'm not gonna say everybody in the hood is like that, but this is just what happened. He's a very jealous character. Uh he did a lot of I wanna say robberies, like petty crime type of stuff. And she calls herself leaving him and things got a little not a little, a lot of bad to where she ended up getting chopped up. And throw him in the trash can. And he kills himself. Straight up. Um, that's one incident. Um, and, and we all had to. I'm sorry, I gotta just, just get through that a little bit. But take your time. We all have to really pay attention to our loved ones and the people that they're dating. You know, we really have to do that. And I'm not saying like be in a business as far as pushing them away like yo I don't fuck with that nigga you know how that go you could push people away too doing that you have mm -hmm. to be involved be an ear you always have your door open don't be like yo if you fuck with that nigga again I ain't fucking with you because you never know 
what can happen. You know, I had two friends actually who died from domestic violence. And I want to shout out the bad boy and I want to shout out Diddy because Diddy, a lot of people didn't know, Diddy had sent flowers for the incident. Diddy had sent money to help with the funeral at the time. Diddy did that for me. So even with me coming back on the show spazzing out, I had no right to do that. You know what I'm saying? So that's why it's like, for me, when it comes down to Diddy, he got a real soft face. I'm talking about right here, right here, you know, what mm-hmm. I'm in my heart for that. Um, a lot of people thought it was my biological sister. I'm like, no, no, it ain't. It wasn't my biological sister. Oh, because I have a biological sister named Marquita. Thank God she's still living. I have another friend who got murdered around the time. Her name was Lorraine. Another incident with domestic violence. Um, she was dating this guy. Me and her had this whole thing that, okay, you about to make it with making a band. I'm going to make it with the modeling thing. Like, this was my bestie from, like, elementary school. Now, mind you, both of them I knew from elementary school. Lorraine was dating this guy. And I did not like him, Oliver. It was just, he was quiet, but he wasn't the quiet of what you think. He was like the sneaky quiet. You feel me? Like He was the type that treated my friend a certain way away from us. Treated her a certain way around us. You know, I used to talk to her about him, uh, talk about his little jealous fits and different things like that. She didn't listen to me. Um, Was dating a guy for a while. Then when she finally listened to me, I guess the guy had a key to her house. She was upstairs sleeping in her bedroom. He came in the house and stabbed her up 33 times and shot her in the head with her own gun. And then he proceeded to the living room, waited for her brother, Vaughn. We all grew up together. And when he came in from work, shot him in the head with her own gun, proceeded out the, na- out the house, went into uh, the other females around the neighborhood, used a ray gun and killed them. Killed these women. Their mom stayed exactly, stayed to this day, stayed next door to the house. She had this feeling like, yo, I need to go check on my kids because I haven't seen them all day. She goes over there. She says she's seen the door all like, because I went and seen her not too long ago. Um, Because I wanted to talk to her and get her side. Because I, 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 I had, I wasn't able to do that for years. You know what I'm saying? To go back to Detroit and face certain things like people I lost and the tragedy of me making it so recently I was able to like do this so um her mom was telling me how she went next door and uh checked and the way the door was is like she couldn't get in so she had sent somebody like yo go up go in there and check, check, check on my kids so when they went inside they told her ma'am you can't come in here she's like why what she they said just call the police she was stabbed 33 times upstairs, shot in the head, and her son was shot in the head in the living room. All through domestic violence. So it's like that area in my life, like when I go talk, I talk from that standpoint of view of safety, protection, and knowing the people that you're dating. You know, it's okay to get therapy, like trying to figure people out. You know what I mean? Like we never know what this individual may be feeling or going through, it is a such thing as dementia. Jealousy is a form of dementia. A lot of people, because you're seeing something that's not there. So anybody is accessible to get that disease, a dementia. You know, you 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 be like, hold up, I probably was with somebody and I ain't never feel like this before. And then all of a sudden you get with somebody, you get a little touch of dementia. You have to see about yourself. You have to see about the person when they start doing little things like that. You have to really make sure you're safe. I'm big on that. You know, so going through that door and making a band. So when I came back, I really wanted to be in a band now. It was like, okay, if it's if it's for me. I do remember I'm you saying do, that. Yeah, I'm going to do it. But I think Diddy took it from a point of view like, oh, I don't want nobody else to use this to get on. But truthfully, that's what it was there for. I don't think everybody wanted to stay in the band forever. Mm-hmm. You know, but I would have been bad boy probably forever, you know what I'm saying, to my heart. But I would have had to grow eventually. But mm-hmm. 
I was really being honest. Like, I was willing to go through. I mean, I lost my god sister at that time. We dreamed about this type of stuff. And then, you know, losing other friends. I mean, it was like, I'm here now. But again, for those people who's watching and you don't get a chance to see the most. Sometimes you got to watch your mouth in the moment. And that's real rap. I did a lot of, you know. I feel, I feel, I feel, and I didn't have a safe place. Like if I was friends with you, Oliver, back then. You, probably, I probably could have told you everything. You were like, no, bitch, don't go, don't, <laughs> <laughs> don't you do that, bitch? I'm like, okay, okay, okay. But at the time, I didn't have like real support of people who was really happy for my position. Mm-hmm. People were jealous, so it was like, yeah, fuck Diddy. Go over there and tell that nigga, fuck him. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, fuck this nigga. I can, yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying? I didn't really have the support. And then by the time my friends who got murdered, it was like, I know they would want me to do it. You know what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. let me go ahead and do it. But by then it was too late. You know so. what What do you or what you tell somebody going through domestic violence right now? Um, Something to help them realize what's going on and get out of it. Okay, so I can share about me. Um, I shared on my story. I don't know if you've seen the house. It had the bullet holes in the wall. Mm-hmm. I was 15 years old. I was dating my baby, my other baby. If I remember, I said the guy before this one. Um, he was very jealous. So if I'm, if it's a woman out there who's dealing with first time is jealousy, dementia, that. You don't get your ass whooped or get mental shit without some form of this person going through dementia, right? Mm-hmm. So, in this story with me, them bullet holes, you know, he was shooting at me. Oh, wow. I was standing right there. And then on the other side, like, when people see my documentary on the other side of the wall, it's more bullets. Filled up. I was 15. He was 16. His wow. mom and everybody lived in that house. He was off the chain. You talk about gang members in the house. You talk about certain things going on, and I didn't have what they, what I learned, because we're gonna get to that later on in life. Um, uh, escape the proper escape plan. Um, having an escape plan is real. You cannot be sitting there let this nigga know you gonna leave. You know we always do that. Nigga, I'm about to leave you. I swear to God, I can't take this no more. You cannot do that. <laughs> you got to straight up act like everything the same, everything normal. Have your people on the side drop. And right when you ain't, don't see, that's when you get away, but you can't go back. But a lot of our dopamine be, be Come on, at, serious. At, at a high. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So when you leave away from him, they don't understand about the dopamine. You're going to start going through that fix. You're going to start going through that withdrawal. And then what happens is a lot of people kick back. Oh, I got to get my dopamine. I got to get high again. They go back around that person. Now that person want to fuck you up because you, he feels demented. You didn't left him for another nigga. You didn't plant, you did all this crazy stuff, but you back for your dopamines. And now you didn't probably didn't fuck around and got murdered. So rule number one, and I say murdered all the time because you see women getting burned with grease. You get, I have stories of like my friend who got chopped up, the one who got stabbed up, you know what I'm saying? And this, I have a lot of stories, you know, to where people with dementia have sent them in certain places. And because of the other person's dopamine and not being able to go through that withdrawal from that individual is how you find yourself more in quicksand. So now you get higher and higher, you dumping more stuff on you, and when you try to leave, it's really bad. So I would say to the person that's trying to leave, like myself, uh, it really was a bad tragedy how I ended up leaving, not not even with the gun part. I still was there after that because I was scared as hell. And the dopamine, you know what I'm saying? Because in the process of everything, can I, can I be grown on here? Mm-hmm. For him to be 16 and me to be 15, that nigga was fucking me like he about four. You understand what I'm saying? I'm talking about I I I didn't know little boys can eat pussy back then. Oh my god! Oh my god! I was was, was set up from the flower. You know what I'm saying? saying? Go off mysterious. You know, so it was like, oh my god! And then I was such a tomboy, and it was like, 
oh, he's my boy. He's he's like really put me out here. And, you know, it was just so much. And I got away because he got abusive to one of my children. Mm. He actually abused one of my children. And that's another story that I want to come talk to you about in person because it's so deep. Mm-hmm. It's so deep. And I ended up jumping out the, set, the house that I sent you in the inbox, the second floor window out on the top of the car and ran with my child bloody. You know, so at the end of the day, you try. I've been through so, and before I continue, God will put us through the same thing until you get it. And that's not the last time I've been through something traumatically abusive in relationships. Mm-hmm. But the last time I went through what I went through, Oliver, I got it. I got it. I got it. And that's all I want to say. And I want to say to the young ladies, you have to have an escape plan. And you have to understand the dopamine. What's dopamine? Mysterious is the same thing that happens like if you get high off weed, if you get high off of whatever pills or whatever it's the same thing that's let off into your dna they give mm. you that hot love give you that same support mm-hmm. you know and yeah. that's why too with the supporters mm-hmm. with our our people in relationships we have to understand the dopamines too mm-hmm. that's why you can't pull them away you're like why the fuck you won't leave they high it's a high it's a mm-hmm. fix it's a high so you, you have to be there, try to figure out how you can get them unhigh or whatever the situation may be. But my advice is you have to have an escape plan. You have to know this is what you want to do. You have to understand that dopamine is going to you want to go through withdrawal, but you got to get through it. It's like a heroin addict. Once you get through it, you're good. Mm-hmm. And this too shall pass. As long as you only got one life. You know, so... Thank you so much for sharing that with us. And this is why I've um, fell, in, fell in love with talking to Pat Persons from reality shows, because of course we will talk about the bullshit, but it's such a great conduit for greater conversations, more important conversations. And I really do appreciate you sharing your story and, a share, and sharing your advice and the knowledge that you know with other people, because I'm pretty sure somebody watching this now or later on YouTube will be inspired, or they can tell somebody else what you just said. So I really do thank you a lot, Mysterious. I thank you for having this platform and making mm-hmm. me so comfortable, because look, I was scared. I ain't gonna lie. Mysterious, like, hold up, I've been doing so good. I don't want nobody to, to be like, well, bitch, you never. Know like, hold up, I got a story to tell. It wasn't like that, you know? Mm-hmm. So I want to say thank you for being a spirit of Comfortability, strength, and love. I appreciate it's that. It's, it's God. It's not me. It's God. Yeah, it's God, God. Did this. I don't do shit just up a sit down and put on some glasses and smile. So yes. I appreciate you. Yes. I appreciate yes. you. We we got some more questions. We ain't done yet. Okay. So let's talk about one of the iconic moments of making the band period <laughs> when Diddy is down to the wire trying to choose who he's going to put in the band. He's in the house. And he make y'all go on one side of the room and the other side of the room. And he tell y'all to battle it out. How was that? You was battling against me to my role. Baz was in there. Everybody was, it was crazy. Yes. How was it? To be honest with you, Diddy made me know why. Because Baz and me to my role had the biggest feud in the house. Because mm. Mina felt like, hold up, if she got cut, then why did he bring her back? Mm-hmm. He had a lot to say. So Mina, I, I don't even know what Mina Moreau is doing right now. I don't even know if she calls herself Mina Moreau. I wonder if she's still, you know, rapping or what she's doing. But at the time, Mina had a lot of, she was like the, to be honest, she was like the first, like how Cardi, she was the first like Cardi B a reality show type. Rang out, always talking shit, the, the motherfucker in the middle was shit, you know? So that day was very intense. And when Diddy made me sit down, I thought, like, hold up, did, did I lose? But then I noticed that Diddy wanted them two to duke it out. Mm-hmm. You know? Um, Diddy was saying at the time, the people in, uh, at Bad Boy was like, Bad and Mysterious got such a different type of flow. You can't 
compared the two. Mm-hmm. Tina Moreau and Baz had so much like similar. It was race. similar, very New York style, very, very, very New York style. Mina Moreau actually sounded like Foxy Brown a little bit to me. Yes, she mm-hmm. was back. And she was that, she was really a bad girl back then. But the thing mm-hmm. is, she, uh, used to always mess up all the time. And that used to piss them off. She could have been in the band, no bullshit. She did not mess up. You think that's what happened because she kept messing up? Hell yeah, did it. They'd be like, she'd be going hard, be like, oh my God. He'd be like, I don't want to put no money on it. We about to have million dollar tours. And you get on that stage and you mess up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You can't be doing that. So that's what really like, messed her up was her messing up and stuff like that. So we have a question from Tess Derillis who was asking, can you ask Mysterious, why would she say she wanted to be a solo artist in front of the cameras while attempting to make the band? And she did not think it would get back to Diddy. I was saying the same thing. I was like, why does Mysterious keep saying this? Okay, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say, right? So, this was so can say it when you say mysterious, it was so stupid of you. Mysterious, it was dumb as <laughs> fuck. So I really felt like Diddy and me, I felt like, okay, I had my lawyer at the time. My lawyer told me that the contract was trash, 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 right? And he did tell me the best thing to do would would be not to make the band. But you have to be able to make yourself a market or a person that everybody remember you. So okay. I was like, okay, me strategizing. A lot of people didn't know I was strategizing with Larry Rudolph, who was my attorney at the time, which was Britney Spears' uh, attorney, right? Oh. So we were plotting together, and he his whole thing was, okay, Mr. Spears, you, in, you, you there, you in the spotlight. You have to figure out how you're going to make everybody know you. So I'm like, okay, I could go this way. Oh, Mysterious, I'd be like, Mysterious, da, da, da. Or I could really become a personality. So I said, you know what? Ain't nobody being like like a little thorn in the side. Let me try. <laughs> I started saying, I want to be solo. And you know, it looks like, like what they going to say? Like, is it going to get back? You know, and it did. And by the time, you know, I was really like, yeah, I want to be in the band. That shit backfired. You know what I'm saying? Because Diddy really was watching everything. And Diddy really took a liking to me. He really took a liking. He took me everywhere. I'm talking about TRL, all that stuff. And mm-hmm. you see, you see when Mina Monroe got mad at me when, when I had, he let me leave and go to the studio with Demo Wet. Like, everybody mm-hmm. else couldn't leave the house. And Mina was like, look. Oh, so look at my theory. She could just leave the house. I'll take her out of left And I wasn't putting two and two together. Like, hold up. I'm in the band. They ain't even got no script. This is so wrong. Let me chill out. No, I was like. He wanted to turn it up. I was in God. And then when Diddy came and confronted me that night, did you see that? Yes, when, when he actually, and, and he was like, Diddy was like, so do you want to be in the band? And, and you was like, if the opportunity is for me to be in a band, I'm going to be in a band. He was like, that's not what I asked you. And I was like, I'm literally on the couch days ago. I'm like, Mysterious, just no, oh, just say yes. yes, I want to be in a band. Be a team player, Mysterious. Just be a team player. That's why I should have had you as my friend back in the day. <laughs> I just said, maybe I you should have this you man man. money, at least some of it. If he give y'all, he gonna only give y'all two pennies, but go get it. Exactly, and that's I love you, what I'm saying, like, with everybody that's even had the opportunity during making a band, Diddy's about to get a Lifetime Achievement Award for BET. And congratulations to Diddy. I want to be the first mm-hmm. one to say, if I'm not the first, but look, Diddy getting a Lifetime Achievement Award. So let's think about that for a second. Band members, everybody, what Diddy wanted me to be the coach, let's talk. <laughs> How can you tear down someone who the Lifetime Achievement Award was already in process of, of gaining? And nothing that nobody said, Freddie P. Oh, everybody from the locks on down. Oh, Diddy, the work from Mace on down is not stopping this man from getting the Lifetime Achievement Award. And I be wanting to ask people, what is your agenda and your motive when you go off on Diddy? 
is it or is it your motive to 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 like take away all his money and take away all his fame and he's not Diddy no more? What is the the purpose? Me when I went off on Diddy, it was TV time. <laughs> it was Showtime. To be honest, it was Showtime. It was Showtime, but we gonna get there. But it was Showtime, so. You know, Diddy is getting a lifetime achievement award. You need to think about that. And he's I think Diddy's to- dope. I mean, listen, I'm not excusing any of the allegations from, you know, what people say about him. Those aren't my experiences. My experience is just seeing Diddy through the TV. So I can only go off my And I like Diddy. I love him. I, I like Diddy. I- Always have. Hey, look, if I get my chance, listen, I'm standing on your show. I'm working on a record. And I'm calling out Ross on it. Look, he might can't handle it. And I'm saying it on your show. <laughs> Guess what record I'm doing? You might want to get in on it. Because it's going to be like one of them um, ladies night out um, type of thing. Ring my bell. Oh, that's cute. You can ring my bell. Oh, that's lit. That's lit. And I want to, you know, you did he involved in that? Why not? You know what I'm saying? I got some hits. Got some hits. You know? So we get to the final day. And this is from Lady J. Shout out to Lady J. She is asking, was Diddy as cold as he seemed on TV during her meltdown at the restaurant? Where he said, Yo, somebody outside spazzing, go handle that and kept eating dinner. What did the guy who came in the bathroom to check on you say? So we're just going to talk about the whole spasm moment. So Diddy's okay. in the room. And Diddy is saying... honest with you, I'm going to tell you. You know, editing is a must. I learned that, you know, it's a whole stuff that happened that they got to chop it down to the exciting part. So when you go back to the day, first of all, I was drunk. You okay. See grab it. If you've seen it, I'm like, yeah, apple martini. You get the drink. Everything that was going by, I'm grabbing. And I'm not a drinker, everybody. Mm-hmm. I am not a drinker. I I am not a drinker. I could drink a little bit, but not the way I was drinking that night. So when Diddy was calling everybody, if you go back and look at the show, he'll call a name and he'd look at me. Then he'll call another name and then he'll look at me. Do you see me all like, you know what I'm saying? So when he called everybody on that side, I didn't know to look at me like I said, it was for him to give me a solo deal or whatever. I felt like Diddy purposely was taunting me mm. because I was drunk too. Mm-hmm. Now, if I was sober, it would have been like, "What the looks about? Like, let me wait and see." I would have asked him because I'm there with him. You know what I'm saying? Like, what the fuck you gonna do with me? Why was you looking at me like that for months? But you know, when liquor is in the play, you think all the craziest shit. I saw oh, this nigga wanted with me. Uh huh. This <laughs> this nigga wants sauce. So. He he knows how me and Chopper are at each other. Because remember, he said he was going to put five people in the band. He said in the last minute, he chose to put six. So he looks at Chopper. He looks at me. He looks at Chopper. He looks at me. And he keeps his eyes on me and say, Chopper. You got to go back and look at it. And when he did that, I said, oh, these niggas. <laughs> I said, this nigga just played me. And that's when Chopper talked about, like, yeah, boy, and all that stuff. And I was like, yo, don't they know I'm from the east side of Detroit? Don't they know I'll tear this motherfucker? <laughs> <laughs> so I go to the bathroom. Mind you, first I'm sitting there. And then the only thing running my mind, now mind you, here come the cameras. They creeping. They from the other room. I'm sitting. I'm like, why are these fucking cameras coming? The show is over. The band didn't made it. Why the fuck they looking at me? So they can't close. I'm, I'm rocking now. I'm like, these niggas better get the fuck out of my face. As soon as the camera got close enough, they get in my face. I broke the glass because I need a moment. I needed a moment, Oliver. I was angry. I am a sore loser. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Monsieur, you went bananas. What? And what? I'm a ball player. He put, people don't put... I, I played basketball in school. I was definitely captain of the basketball team, and I was the one that when we lost, I would be the one to go in the locker room and go ham. And mm-hmm. the coach would have to always come, Kimberly, 
calm down. We supposed to win every game. What? That, that was me. So I was already going through a basketball moment, a, a sore losing moment. You was whole, drinking. Like, I don't know how to grasp myself. I just lost in front of the whole world. And he looked at me and said, Chapel. Oh, bitch, you just, oh, you, oh, that was, oh. So I went in the bathroom and I was screaming. I was going off and I was going off on myself in the mirror. Mm -hmm. Like, how the fuck? You went through all these motherfuckers. I was giving it to myself. So I think that was Wolf, rest in peace, who came in that bathroom. And he was telling me, he was like, Mysterious, calm down. Stop. Did he got some? I don't hear that. She kept saying, Did he have some for me? I'm like, I don't know. He, I kept going. He like, wait, wait. And he was trying to tell me, wait. And that's when I left out the bathroom because I got mad because he was telling me, Did he have something for me? And I said, What the fuck he got for me? I'm coming out the bathroom. Like, All that shit for nothing. All that shit for nothing. And then you see the producer come over there, like, yo, chill, chill. Because they were trying to tell me. Did he was Diddy had a contract for you. Oh, so, so, okay. How, how did you eventually come to find out that Diddy had a contract for you? Was that Har. You Har. Har Pierre. He ends up calling me like a couple of days later and he tells me, he said, why did you spaz out like that? Diddy had a contract for you. You really hurt his... He told me I hurt him. Mark Mark Pitts, you know Mark Pitts, the producer? No. He even said that he, he did a lot of production for um Usher and a lot of different people. He even told me, he said, yo, you really hurt Diddy feelings with that spazzing out like that. He had a he had a contract for you. And that's the true story of, of what happened with me with making a band. So that's why when people are like, yo, Diddy did, I'd be like, hold up, hold up. I really fucked that up. Like because it was going to be, I think he was going to do a, like, Mysterious versus the band. You want to watch TV? Mm -hmm. He was going to do a Mysterious versus the band. And... Mm -hmm. So, how did that night come to an end? Because we see you, of course, the next day. I think you talking to Sarah, and you was like, which that... I I think it was one of the most heartfelt moments I think I've ever seen on TV when you was like just saying like, you know, you was coming, you know, you was talking to her and you was like, I, I, I wanted to get out of this. But how did that night end? Because we just saw you go down the street and you was ripping up flowers and they was following you. What happened? Did you go to sleep? How did you get to calm down? They had me in Bellevue. The crazy place. Yes. That's how, because I thank God that MTV did not put me out there like that. They did not put me out there like that. What ended up happening was I spazzed out more than what y'all seen. When I was ripping the flowers going down the street, I, I started fighting the camera crew because they kept following me. The police came. Now I'm wild the fuck out because I'm like, I swear, I swear. <laughs> I was a mad woman. Oh my god. He put my ass in the did he put my ass in the nut house that fucking night? Yes he did. Like, you wanna act up, Misty? <laughs> <laughs> I got stuff for your ass. You wanna get crazy? We this bad boy, baby, we get crazy. <laughs> I know where to put your crazy ass. <laughs> and and I learned my lesson. I mm. said I didn't even know a nigga could do that. And uh when I came back, my producer came picked me up, took me to the house to go pick up my stuff. And that's when they was laughing at me. And that's when Allison and all them, I was upstairs like, yo, and I was in the fucking, like, this nigga really, like, why would did he do me like that? Like, I'm fucking angry about not making it and blah, blah, blah. And then that's when Allison and them was looking at me like, I didn't know then. He was just like, like, you really you fucked up. Mm -hmm. You know, and so where, you know, just having, just to speak from an educational point, having a lack of control. Mm -hmm. to where now I master that. Self-control is the best control. That's what's up. You know, to where I don't want to to walk out on my blessings again or get slighted on something because I ain't control myself. Now, don't get it fucked up. Missy got them hands when needed. <laughs> I 
I have a lot of control though. <laughs> Get mm -hmm. there, you know what I'm saying? So, cause you never know, and I and that day haunts me. Really, and that day haunts me so much. Cause I'd be like, what if I would have just not? What would have happened if I would have just? What I had, you know what I mean? With all the stuff happened, like me getting with the wrong man after that, with all me getting locked up, with all that had happened if I would have just had self control. So to this yeah. day. That day haunts me, you know, to where it's like I purposely have self-control. I don't want no more haunting nights. So you talked about it earlier a little bit when on season two of Making the Band 2, you come back on episode eight. And like the name of the, the name of the of the episode is Mysterious is back or Mysterious is returns or some or some crap like that. Yes, yeah, Mysterious. How is was back. that getting that phone call? saying they want you to come back like what what was the behind the scenes talks around that moment it was an amazing feeling it was mm. amazing feeling. but i have to say again to everybody i did not have the right supporting team when i got the call my heart was like yes i swear to god did he do fuck back this motherfucker work tired to settle with the but then my support system was like, yo, fuck that nigga, Diddy. Damn. They like, man, you that shit ain't real. Fuck that, that nigga fucking cut you in the beginning. And da, 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 da. Man, fuck that. You, you out here, you selling your own CDs, you doing this. You make sure that nigga know that. So when Diddy brought me, and I, I when he hugged me, that was so genuine. But you can see in him, like, son, they right with Missy. You know what I'm saying? Like, because I had a pep talk from a. Uh, people who had lack and was not in position like me. And we mm -hmm. got to be careful of who we take wisdom and who we let speak in our minds because they can walk you right out of your blessing. Mm -hmm. So heart of heart, I wanted to jump all over Diddy like, oh, I got it! And just get right to it. But then I'm like, man, I got to be real to my homies and shit. They right, you know what I'm saying? Fuck this shit, you know what I mean? So when Diddy mm -hmm. called me and he was being so humble, that's why Diddy was not that humble no more. Like I feel because the band, me, the band, and all of us truly had Diddy's heart, dog. Truly had that man heart. Like he really was trying to show the world who he was as a person mm -hmm. and an executive, and we stole his heart. Mm -hmm. Here it is, all these kids from all over with all these problems, and then we all got talent, and Diddy like, shit, I've been there, but y'all gotta listen to me. Like, he, and mm -hmm. then he got involved in Dylan's court case, he got involved in helping send him money for a funeral with me, and you know what I'm saying? And we didn't take the time to really see, hold up, he really love us. So when the other seasons of Making a Band came around, oh, did he, he say was a different nigga, like, man, fuck that, these little niggas ain't getting my heart no Kill everybody. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But yeah, like, you know, I, I when he called me back, I, that day haunts me because Diddy was being very honest, very open. He said, You give me goosebumps. And I should have been like, Yo, Diddy, I swear to God, I thank you. Let's, let's, let, let, let me get back on the show. And you feel me? Fuck with the band talk about. Put me in that house. <laughs> I should have just went negotiating business, but mm -hmm. I already had negotiated with my team who was leading me at the time to basically like, yo, and they say, yo, bring a Wendy Williams, which was his arch enemy at the time. Did you do that? You didn't do that. Wait, wait. I, I probably, yes! I mean, you probably I went on. Yeah, I'm doing a lot of, um, uh, mixtapes and I'm on Wendy Williams show. Oh yes you did say that. Yes you did. Yes you did. You did. Why? Where were you at Oliver? <laughs> Girl, I was what year is this? Girl, I probably was in the first grade, second grade. I don't know shit. You even in the first grade would have told me chill out. I would be like, yeah, call me up <laughs> <laughs> Even you do that then. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But you live and you learn to where now I just feel like I'm just a beast to where like when I went to Rick Ross' car show and being able to deal with somebody like Rick Ross and their team and the business and stuff like that, you know, it only prepared me. And I know Diddy's around with all that, you know. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it only takes a matter of, of, of time before time. the world can see me and Diddy again. But I manifest 
that that's going to happen. And I manifest that we're going to do that hit. Because everybody's seen him with the band, but nobody ever seen what he could do with me. Right. So, was after you did that appearance on the show, we t- and we talked about it earlier, for those of you who are a little late to it, you can rewatch this when I upload this to my YouTube channel. But, like, the band at the time was, like, not here for you coming back. You did you did end up being on the album, but you're about to receive some royalty checks now. What happened after that? Was there any conversations with Diddy or Bad Boy about you guys potentially doing something? Or was it that once it that happened? That always was talk about perhaps me coming on the, the, the road and, and all that, mm-hmm. but it was more so the band not wanting it. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I got you. And, it, and it was like Diddy already overrode them. Like, they got putting her on the album. Like, y'all got to make me. I'm ba- I'm Diddy. You know what I'm saying? He probably looked like shit. Some of y'all wouldn't have been here if the motherfucker ain't say you deserve to be here. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I was his first pick. So Diddy like, hold up. I'm going to put her on the album. We're talking about making music. Y'all talking about something totally different. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But when it came out to, like, travel and probably filming me, being on the road with them, everything that they already was going through, Diddy didn't want to add more drama Right. And that's what I feel. Yeah. So we're we're coming to the end of, of our chat, which I've thoroughly enjoyed this with serious. Like this is so fucking dope. And I know the people who will watch this will enjoy this as well. Thank you so much for being honest and just being transparent and charismatic and all that. It's been oh, thank you. Pleasure. But we we spoke but you know, we spoke before this chat, you know, about many things. About like, you know, what was your life after we saw you on TV? And of course, there were some things that came out in the public that we know about. And you said, Oliver, we can talk about it, but I just want to talk about mental health at the end of the day and the importance of mental health. So I'm passing the um the wheel over to you to navigate this and bring this on home as you, you know, touch on some of the things that you went through afterwards and the message you want to leave us after, with. After making a band, I went through a self-esteem thing. Um, like I said, I always was like a natural beauty, I want to say. Uh, mm-hmm. Not so much co- co- uh, what, cosmetic. I end up meeting someone, and here it is. I'm doing red carpets. I'm a reality star. I'm like, you know what? Marriage. That's the only thing that's left for me. Um, I ended up marrying someone, and he's, it's public. He part, he's been out there doing interviews on me and all that. Let his side of the story be, but I'm going to tell you my side of the story Mm -hmm. um in my marriage i was married to a very jealous man he was a producer um i'm a rapper he knew me from making a band um once i got with him he isolated me from a lot of my family friends even people in business because it was all about him and me being in love with him and different things like that um The abuse was surreal, and I ain't talking about physical, the mental abuse, because all physical physical abuse starts from the mind. It doesn't just, he just haul up and wake up one day and hit you. It's a slow thing of tearing you down. So my mm-hmm. mental started being teared down by him. I wasn't good enough. My emotions started getting torn down by this man. And in the process, I ended up getting pregnant. Now, this happened, like I said, 12 years ago. Um... Ended up getting pregnant. And I really wanted to be with my ex-husband. I really thought that he was what I needed. You know. Mm-hmm. Um, and again, remember like I told you, gotta see through these same tests until you get it right. So I loved him more than I love myself. Um to where I allow him to do certain things. Like I said, mental abuse and everything. It got around the time when I was supposed to get my own reality show at this time. Yeah, a lot of people don't know that. So when this incident happened was around that, my ex-husband ended up getting very upset about that, coming to the meetings and everything, spazzing out, dragging me out the meetings and everything about this damn reality show. Oh, they going to call you the boss. But in his mind, oh, I didn't lost my bitch, real rap. You know what I'm saying? Um... When that happened, when the deals start coming as far as wanting to give me my own reality show at the time, it was supposed to be Mysterious After the Band. That was the name of the show. Um, he got abusive physically. Um, 
on top of the physicality it got so bad to where I tried to start myself in crisis. He came and took me out of crisis because he was my husband and he could do that. And he was telling people, oh, no, she's just trying to get attention, da, da, da. I said, no, something is wrong, buddy. The things that you're doing to me is really fucking with my head. And you put your hands on me and I don't know which way to go, left or right, because I'm married to you. I don't have an escape plan. Me marrying you is supposed to be a sit-still plan, you know? Um, in the midst of all of that, the baby came. When the baby came, oh my God, you talk about turn up season with abuse. So what happened, how I ended up at the hotel was uh, like about a week before that, my ex-husband was talking about um, I couldn't go to sleep. If I went to sleep, he was going to kill me. Oh my God. Um, Talking about how crazy he was going to make me. Uh, He was saying that. Uh, I went to my job trying to tell people. I went to work. And I passed out, too. And they called the ambulance, and they called my husband. I didn't want them to call my husband because I knew I wasn't going to get the chance to go to the hospital. But they had to because he was my emergency contact. He came. He told the ambulance, oh, she don't need to go. This is She don't need to go. She's going to go home with me. Gets in the car. So now it's, uh, I was going to Kingdom Church at the time. I was dealing with Pastor Daniels. Shout out to Pastor Daniels because he prayed for my child and everybody my child was living, but you know what I'm saying. So I was saying to him when we left from my job, I said, Look, I need to go over here to the church because I feel like something's gonna happen. I kept telling him that ain't nothing gonna happen. I said, I feel this in my body. I feel like this is about to go left. I feel like within a second something is gonna change. Get me over here to this church. So he takes me to this church, you know, he bitching. The fuck, I got um, uh, my baby in the back, and I had my son Amari at the time in the back. So, gets to this church. I go into one door, one way. Then when it, I was looking for the pastor, he was in the meeting, and they wouldn't let me talk to him, right? So, um, I said, all right, I'm about to leave. I can't even get to the pastor. So, what ends up happening was the other door, I came out the opposite door than where he dropped me off at. The dementia started. This nigga said I was fucking the pastor. I get in a car. This nigga like, oh, you gonna fucking disrespect me like that? And hit my head up against the motherfucking the car window. That shit shattered. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, oh, shit. This shit going down. The baby's in the back. I'm like, oh, my God. My husband gonna kill me today. So now he gets to the house. His friend there. He takes his friend home. I'm, I just get in the house. I had my baby in the car seat at the time. I'm tired. I, I Some said don't even take him out the car seat, you know? So, he comes back to the house. I'm upstairs. We start fighting about me fucking the pastor. I was not fucking the pastor. And he hits me. I tell him, look, I can't do it no more. I threw my hands up like, dog. You know that feeling like, oh, it was that. when I threw my And I think he felt it. Like, oh, this is it. I said, I can't do this no more. Threw my hands up. Oliver, it was on. I'm talking about we tussling all the way down the fucking stairs. We fighting now. And to the point where my titties got bit up, bit up my breasts. I'm fighting for my life. You know what I'm saying? My kids is there. My, my um, Amari screaming, Chuck Chuck screaming. I don't know how I got him off of me. But he got off me and he ran out the door. When he ran out the door, he hopped in the car and he left. My titties bloody. It up. I had a purple dress on that day. I went next door to the neighbor and I said, please call me a cab. I didn't even say the cops because I felt like he gone. Let me go to somewhere, get somewhere safe and then I'm, I'm going to leave the state. They called. At first she didn't want to because she was a neighbor who always heard us fighting. She always heard us fighting. You know, and in the neighborhood they did not want to get involved you know how neighbors don't want to get involved in certain things, but I begged her, please call this cab. She called the cab. I went downtown to the Marriott and um uh... Hey, say hi. Hi. <laughs> oh, how fun. you doing, little man? How you doing? <laughs> What's your name? Oh uh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> you're so cute. Hi, <laughs> how you doing, little buddy? So um, I went down uh, to downtown to the Marriott, trying to fix up on my wounds. My baby was still crying, and um, 
I was just trying to get a moment, Oliver. You know what I mean? And he went inside, but was nothing I could do to calm him. This is I didn't know nothing about postpartum psychosis at the time. I didn't know nothing about postpartum depression. You know, I didn't know postpartum depression and baby blues was the same thing. You know what I'm saying? I thought they were like different things, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, I don't want to go into like it really happening within a second of like, you know, telling my baby to please be quiet and I shook my baby, be quiet. But it wasn't a thing of me going all like how people would think of the glass because that's the thing that hurt me. People didn't know I love my children. Like, I have six kids. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm a mother of six. This happened to my fifth child. Mm -hmm. You know, at the time I only had five, but now I got six. You know what I'm saying? So, mm -hmm. to be in a situation where you can just lose yourself in that quick of a second, you know, and what happened was I ended up calling, I ran downstairs and told the people at the front desk to call the cops on me. They didn't find me in no hotel by myself, so lava taking over my bed. No. As soon as it happened, I said, oh my God, I lost my coat. Went downstairs, told him to call the cops. When the cops came, I swear to God, I fell asleep. Right there, because I ain't getting no rest. I fell asleep. We got to the um hospital. They told me what was going on. I, I was screaming and stuff. Like, oh my God, I can't believe it. I was out of my shit. And the doctor even said she has lack of rest. There's a lot of depression going on. It's looking like psychosis. I didn't know what that was, you know. And here we go. You know, when I went down to the courts, it was bad. Mm -hmm. You know, to be to be a mom and the person that harmed your child due to mental yeah uh, was a real crazy moment in my life so when they did the psychological evaluation they did four of them and it all came back that i had postpartum psychosis they were trying to give me less time than what i took but i wanted the more time because being the person that did it and as the mom if it was somebody else hell no motherfucker I want you to do some time I don't understand that shit I wouldn't want to hear postpartum post like motherfucker you did something you know and that's how I dealt with myself even during the course wow. of incarceration I I did not give myself no sympathy card I didn't give myself even understanding postpartum um, mm -hmm. once I got inside of the prison and dealing with a lot of different women and people who knew me, I took therapy. I took it upon myself to go to therapy and find out what was first. I went for postpartum psychosis to find out what the fuck that was. And then in the course of therapy is when I found out how they ended up in psychosis was because I had depression. I had severe depression, PTSD, anxiety, and all this shit cooked up in one. And then when you have a baby, it can magnify the baby blues to where now you're out your shit. To where you know how the women, you be like, yeah, how this woman is stab the baby? This, she's out her shit. That's psychosis. You know, and a lot of the dogs get it. That's why they tell you don't touch a dog pup because they won't recognize it from the smell. So mm -hmm. I was at a point of lack of sleep. I had insomnia too. You know what I'm saying? You're going so through a lot. It was a lot. And, 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 a lot. And, and, and then us not understanding mental health at that time. Mm -hmm. Woo! When I tell you the community went against me, oh, and I and I felt like you know what? Y'all have every right. You right. I broke a glass. I'm crazy. I don't need no help. I don't need nobody to write me here and say, "Hey, mysterious, I'm praying for you." Or, you know, I when I first got locked up, Oliver, I purposely for the first two months did not eat no food. All I did was drink. They thought I was trying to commit suicide. 60 days straight, I would not eat. I would only sit and drink, and I was hating myself, and I was just like, mm -hmm. I hate my skin. I'm the one who was on making the band. Why I gotta be like this? And why did God write this for me? And I'm never gonna get out this hell hole. And I'm never gonna, like, especially with love, I felt like, oh my God, nobody's ever gonna love me. Ever. I 
and sometimes to this day, like I feel like that, like I have my son now. Legend was a great, it's the greatest thing that happened to me. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Because he showed me again, I am a great mother. You mm -hmm. know that was the situation, and I'm more equipped now. You know what I mean? To where I make sure my mental is all right. I'm still in therapy. I still go do group things. I do a lot of things just to make sure that I'm in line with making sure that I'm good. You know, but having such a story like that Oliver I'd be like yo it's going to take a special person to even I don't want to cry this is not a show to cry mm -hmm. you know I got to stay smiling but it's going to take a special person to want to stand next to somebody who has been troubled like me but who has made it that's why my story of the billboard the, the royalty checks my, me having my company at TV and you know what I'm saying? It's on Wall Street and you know what I mean? People like rossing them, embracing me and like, look, your story can help the world. And, mm -hmm. You know, that's really my story. And I hated my skin for so long, Oliver. I did. You know, that's why I was kind of scared to talk to you about it because it was like, yo, I'm going to start living. I don't want people to live, like look at me how they dealt with me back then mental depression with women with babies and all that stuff and especially if they're in an abusive situation is real and it's real and mm -hmm. I never thought I would be I never thought I never thought you know what Miss Serious I'm not no preacher I'm not a psychologist I ain't no therapist I just feel like I'm a good person who just know a little bit of something mama you keep telling your story you keep telling your story. I, you know, I wasn't there. I don't know what everything, um, everything that has gone on, but God clearly has delivered you and restored your family and put you in the right place. Mama, you keep telling your story. You keep telling, you keep, you keep telling your story. There's so many people right now on this Instagram chat right now, thanking you and saying, agreeing and sending you love and stuff like that. And a lot of times I'm learning in life what we think our life should be. God already has a different plan. And his plan is always greater, Mama. You keep telling your story. Like, I think you are beautiful. I think you are so mm -hmm. talented. You're the first person that I wanted to interview for this because watching you on the screen even years ago, I was like, I can, I can feel her story. I can feel her passion. I can, I, I, I can feel it. It's a real thing. And the way that you so eloquently talked about mental health, domestic violence, all these other things, and you still hear, girl, you still here. Your life is healed, healing. You got your children. You got faith. You got fire. You got passion. That is a testimony, mysterious, that is touching me right now. I'm pretty sure it's touching people out there. And when people watch this, it's going to touch them. Mama, you got it going on. That's 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 all I'm going to say. I ain't going to get too, too much in it. And you should be, I'm very proud of you. I'm just not meaning, but you should be very proud of you yourself right now for even being to to speak about it the way that you're talking about it and still be able to smile and have the spear and have the passion and the drive and the vision for yourself. That is remarkable. And to me, that shows a testament of God's power. So oh, thank, thank you so much for even inviting me and my friends here in this moment um, in your life, sharing this moment with us. I think that is, I think that is so dope. Thank you for being an angel because it's only certain people that can hold a story like that and not be bitter or you know because you know it was a child involved and I thank God he's living that's another thing he's living you know he didn't die mm -hmm. I just want to thank you for being who you are you know I people need to take notes from you you know it's not all about belittling people or you know pointing the finger is really about allowing us, like you said, to have a platform to where we can feel safe. And I felt safer than I was scared. All, not scared. I was nervous all day. I was like, oh, man, I don't know. <laughs> you know what I mean? So thank you for your smile. Thank you for your breathing pattern, you know, because a lot of people don't understand even a breathing pattern means something. You're breathing to where you breathe me into the conversation. Like, you feel me? You, you feel safe, you know what I'm saying, to where I was able to pick up on that. And I want to thank you. And may you have, like, the biggest 
success that I see for you, you know. And may you be a part of my life story and the movie I'm putting together and stuff like that. You know, who knows what may happen with this. But I want to thank you no. so much for your platform. Thank you for the day you thought about doing it. You know what I'm saying? Thank you I mean, for, I'm like, just a nosy like, bitch. Like, I'm not an interview OZ. I just like being nosy and I just like asking questions and I've always listened. I've always sat in the front of class and raised my hand and be like, I want to know. I want to yes. know. in trouble sometimes, but it comes from a good place. And so yes. again, I'm just grateful. Like, I'm just grateful to be able to share this moment with you and you pouring your heart out like this. This is so beautiful. And like I said, you just keep on going, Mysterious. Like, clearly yes. you have power that this guy who saw you years ago and saw you again was like, I need to reach out to her and talk to her and see what is going on. So you keep doing your thing, Mysterious. Like, and I'm Thank pretty you. sure you gain some supporters. You're going to get, you just keep doing your thing. I've been on your page. You be moving and shaking and doing your thing. You keep doing your <laughs> thing. Keep doing, you know, stay healthy, mentally, physically, spiritually, all the other stuff. And mama, you got it. Yes, and you stay my friend. I got you. No, we're friends for life. <laughs> we're friends for life. Apple for life. <laughs>